if everybody doesn't already know, this is Cami Travis Groves. She is a past president on the board and has been involved for many years, continues to be involved and contribute. Um, and I'm going to just let you take it away and I will let you know if anything comes up in the chat. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, welcome, everybody. I want this to be a super interactive session. So I'm going to ask that you get you, the chat window open and um, type in it uh, from time to time. Um, because I think this is important that we connect, that all of us connect. I think that's the, the power of these kind of events is that we actually connect. So before, I want to talk about before the COVID-19 fiasco, during, which is where we are now, and then after, and help you come up with a new after that suits um, what, what's possible and what's best for each of us. Super simple, but we're going to go really deep, okay? So uh, yesterday I stumbled across a poem, which I'm not much into poetry, but I stumbled across this poem by a friend of mine named Mark McGinnis, um, who is also a creative. He considers himself a creative. He's in England. And I asked for the permission to, to share this poem with you. And then I found out that he's reading the poem and there's a, re there's a recording. So not only do you get the dulcet tones of Byron Ginsburg, you also get the amazing accent from Mark McGinnis. All right, so this requires some hurdles for me. So bear with me for just a few minutes. Lockdown by Mark McGuinness. We're cooped up with ourselves, alone together for weeks or months until it's safe to breathe. The virus crosses continents like weather. For now we're stuck here, wondering when or whether we'll get back to our everyday routine. We're cooped up with ourselves, alone together. The death toll rising, falling like a feather at the mercy of an idle breeze. The virus crosses continents like weather. As days drift by, we find new ways to weather boredom, frustration, solitude, and grief. We're cooped up with ourselves, alone together, and some of us are at the end of our tether, and some of us are sinking week by week. The virus crosses continents like weather. Has life as normal vanished altogether? Once locked up, can we ever be set free? We're cooped up with ourselves, alone together. The virus crosses continents like weather. So what do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of that? Beautiful poem. I like the uh, the alone together part. I thought that was pretty uh, yeah. kind of almost a double meaning there because he's he's right in both cases, right? We're, we're here yeah. sitting by ourselves, but we're all sitting by ourselves together at the same yeah. situation. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's not a person on the planet who doesn't understand when you say what happened back in 2020. Right? We're all we're all going to experience this. So finding that poem was just serendipitous. And the fact that, that Mark is also a creative um, also helped. So let's talk about where we were before. Did anybody feel, just show me your hands, did anybody feel rushed before this all happened? Did anybody feel like there was never enough time? There was never enough, oh, how can I get all this done? Because, oh my God. Right, Laura says always, very rushed and overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So I'm calling, I'm calling this time the great pause. And I was on a call the other night uh, and somebody said, it's the great and powerful pause. Anybody get that reference? Wizard of Oz, I just love that. Anyway, it's, it is the great and powerful pause. 
Um, but, but I want to talk about what, what's actually happening. I did a little informal survey of what's weighing heaviest on people's minds. And some of the answers I got, and you can add yours, feel free to add yours in the chat. The cooking, the cleaning, kids being at home. Um, they feel the direction of our country is kind of back, backtracked or slipped. Um, that the creative industry is really going to change and is going to be influenced by this. Um, some people are willfully ignorant, and there's a lot of misinformation out there right now. Um, their projects and their workflow is being impacted. And all the work, one of, one of my personal fears is that all the work that is put on hold is all going to come back at once. How am I going to face that, right? Um, pay cuts. My husband had to take a pay cut. There's some people who are unemployed completely right now. Um, job and elimination possibility, or maybe even that there's no freelance work after this. So big fears, big picture things, right? Not something small and trivial, like how am I gonna pay for the mortgage? How am I gonna, how am I gonna make it? How am I gonna survive? Homeschooling, yeah. All of these things. I'm going to open that up. Yeah. A daily whirlwind. Unsure about everything. When you're non-essential. Yeah. All of these things. All of these things are okay to feel. If there's anything I have learned from this session or this, this craziness, this time, is that it's okay to feel whatever it is you're feeling. Um, don't let anyone tell you that now's the time to hustle and now's the time to, no, we're experiencing something. No one in our generation, no one who is, who's alive right now, most likely has been through this and remembers it. This will affect everything. And, and for you to pretend and, and go along like business as usual is doing yourself a really big disservice. And I'll tell you why. There were studies done from the people who actually watched people fall to their deaths uh, during 9-11. And they did a follow-up, they interviewed those people, and then they did a follow-up 15 years later, and they put these people into two groups based on their initial response. The first group is um, full of people who saw the event, and were horrified by it, and they wept, and they embraced how horrible it was to see that. And the second group, they put people in it who said, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to, I don't, I want to erase that from my memory. I, I, I don't ever want to have to see that again. I don't want to deal with that. And 15 years later, the group that denied what they were feeling had higher cholesterol, higher blood pressure, higher instances of heart attack, higher BMI, and more rates of death. Because they did not step into and allow themselves permission to feel everything that they were feeling. So I invite you every day, in every moment, to feel whatever the heck you're feeling. Roll in it for just a few minutes. If you are feeling grief, like true sobbing grief, set a timer on your phone. Like, I want to feel this, but I don't want to go more than a minute or five minutes or an hour, whatever it is, and allow yourself to feel it. Give yourself some grace. We are human beings, not human doings. And to be, you have to be in the moment and be with all of your feelings. That's the first thing. Uh, there's no such thing in this time right now as a negative emotion. So feel everything. Give yourself permission to feel everything. Even if it's laughter. So I have another funny for you. Or another share for you. And it's funny. Open up that and share this. Okay. And feel free to unmute yourselves if you like. I don't have that mic on. We're not, we're good now.
These are real fears. Right? I love these. Yeah. Yeah. All right, a little brevity there. So I encourage you, like I said, feel every single thing that you're feeling. Give yourself permission, feel it all. Um, if it feels like the negative emotions are just killing you um, as a freelancer, and I get it, believe me, I get it. Um, ask yourself what story you're telling yourself. What is the self-talk that's going on in your head? Is it, I should, I shouldn't, I can't? Is it, I'm afraid to? Those aren't real productive right now. I invite you to be very, very cognizant of the self-talk that's going on, banging around in your head. Because your brain can't tell the difference between what you're thinking and what's actually happening. So if your social media consumption is all negative, your brain says, okay, here's all the chemicals you need for that reality. But if you're so amped up and, and anxious, it's detrimental to your physical health, right? We want to, we want to unplug those negative thoughts step away like limit your social media consumption unless it's funny memes cat videos whatever makes you laugh and brings you joy oh my god the these some good news network with john krasinski if you don't watch that thing every week please do it. it's so good it always makes me cry but happy cry it's the best the best absolutely yes um there's some there, there's a couple ways to deal with what's going on right now. The, the immediate antidote to anxiety is gratitude. I encourage you all to start a gratitude list. I recently finished my um, certification in the 100 Days Creative High Growth Program. And every single day we were encouraged to write at least 11 different things every day that we are grateful for. Little did I know what that practice would do for me now is how much anxiety it cancels out. Because anxiety comes from fear and gratitude comes from love. And love and fear cannot, you, you cannot occupy both ends of that spectrum at the same time, right? Only one time. And the more you spend at the love corner, the easier it is to be in the love corner, right? I have a, I have a little image I'll show you a little bit to, to explain that further. But Gratitude as a daily practice is an awesome way to um, mitigate the anxiety. So the scarcity mindset is, I can't, I shouldn't, I'm afraid to, um, I can't go outside. What if you reframe the question and, and sat with a little bit of curiosity and said, okay, what's possible? What's possible? Um, there is this, this great pause the great and powerful pause, as Peyton says, is the perfect time for audits. And you think, oh, audits, what, like tax audits? No, it's a perfect time to give yourself a health audit. Like how healthy am I really? Um, a relationship audit, like how, who are the people in my life who, who drain me of energy? And who are the people in my life who support me and fill me with energy? What's my money situation like? Do we need to clench right now financially? Okay. Uh, are you doing okay? You want to just play it cautiously? It's a great time for a financial audit. Uh, internal. This is I'm talking about in you. Uh, and a time audit. If you're not sure how you're spending your days, start um, a time tracking journal. Every 15 minutes, write down what it is you're doing. You will be amazed how much time you waste, usually in social media. Um, but every 15 minutes, 
and do this for a couple of days and you realize where you're leaking time. And if you're leaking time, you're probably leaking money in the same places. Um, give yourself a sleep audit. Like how, how well is your sleep going? How thoroughly are you resting? Um, are you, are you setting yourself like, this is my bedtime and this is when I want to get up? Or are you like, ah, eh, go to sleep whenever I feel sleepy? But every time you alter your falling asleep and waking up time, you give yourself jet lag. And studies show that jet lag is really bad for your health over extended periods of time. So why would you do that to yourself? So I try to go to bed at 9.30 every night. I read for half an hour to an hour and I get up by 7, 7.30 every day. Oh my God, little did I know how beneficial that is to your clarity of mind, to there's no guilt involved. If I want to stay in bed an extra half hour, I know it's perfect because I'm awake. Yeah. So really focus on where you are now. Try to be more in the present. Um, Self-awareness. Uh, there's meditation apps that are great for just getting you out of your head and slowing down. And that's really one of the biggest benefits to the great pause is slowing down, really taking a breath, really, really slowing down. Our new normal is going to be a lot different and I'm looking forward to it because I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be a little slower than it has been. Anybody else feel that way? Yeah, because we've slowed down, right? So like I said earlier, be aware of your social media consumption. Um, be aware when you use social media as a distraction. If you're gonna allow yourself to be distracted, set a timer. Like I'm gonna sit on my phone for an hour or on my computer for an hour and I'm just gonna go surf. And when that hour is off, move your body, move it. So you have your, your mind you're taking care of, your heart you're taking care of, your gut you're taking care of, your body, your spirit, however you feel about that. And take this moment in the great pause to think about who is it that you want to become? Who is the man you want to become? Who is the woman you want to become? And really think about that. What kind of person do you want to be after this? Do you want to be somebody who's go, go, go? Somebody who's reliable? Somebody who's happy? Somebody who's patient? You get to decide. Because we're not judged on whatever's going on in our heads, we're only judged by what comes out of our mouth and our actions. Who is it that you want to be? And then decide to be that person. For every single thing that happens to you, there is a split second, and science has measured it, it's less than a second, where you get to decide how to respond to whatever it is that's happening to you. And I'll give you an example. Back when I was in my senior year of college, I was in a car accident in this Older woman in a big metal car hit my car. And I bounced off the frame, the door frame, and I bounced off my mom. She was in the car. And I remember deciding in that moment to be angry. I thought, damn it, I only have one car payment left. Damn it, I'm mad. But I decided to be mad, and it went badly because I was mad. Poor woman in the, in the big car couldn't pick up her feet. She was shuffling along. Thank you. Hopefully she wasn't hurt, but, you know, it could have gone really, really bad. So decide who you want to be. Who is that person? Right? And how does your business fit into all this? My God, that's a huge $25,000 question, right? How do you want your business to fit into this? This is a perfect time to audit what it is you do. I would encourage you to make a gigantic list of everything you do in a normal week, in a pre-COVID normal week, from answering the phone, answering emails, providing estimates, invoices, 
contracts to doing the thing they're actually paying you to do, um, to doing dishes and laundry and cooking and walking the dog and every single thing, write a list of every single thing you do. Then circle or highlight everything that you cannot wait to get to. Things that you find easy, that you get into the, the zone of genius. That you're completely lost, that you have no sense of time as you do them. And sometimes it is walking the dog and doing dishes. But I'm betting a lot of those that you circled or highlighted would be things that you got into freelancing to begin with or want to get into freelancing to begin with, to do. The things that you absolutely hate doing, like for me, invoicing, Ugh. taxes, Ugh. consider adding into your cost of business the price of having somebody else doing those. And the reason I say that is because if you spend an hour doing something you hate that you're not good at, You've spent an hour less time doing the thing that you love that you could charge for. Make sense? You want to spend as much time in your zone of genius, in your zone of brilliance, whatever you want to call it. You want to spend as much time in something you love and less time in things you hate. So in, do yourself this, this favor and list everything that you do. List it out, highlight it, whatever. And then those things that you circled, consider those things, that's what you love. That's what you want to build your business around, right? Now we're going to start a new piece of paper, eventually, that is what pe people want and what people need. A lot of times they are not the same thing. Um, and I will, I will give you a, a, a TED Talk by Ch Terry Trespicio, who's fantastic, and I'll put her name in the chat because it's impossible to spell. Trespicio, Tres, uh, Terry Trespicio. She's got a great talk about finding your passion is to like totally wrong. Like don't even worry about finding your passion. Like do the work, do the work you love and you'll figure it out. But worrying about, oh, am I passionate about it yet? Yeah, don't worry about that part. So figure out what it is people want and need and how your business can fit in there. It may mean that you got to pivot. Uh, it may mean that instead of doing just, just copywriting, that maybe you're doing a different kind of copywriting or that you've targeted a different um, industry or a different group of people who need your services more. It might even be COVID-19 recovery related. So think, be, don't be afraid to think outside the box. We are creative people because we're human beings. We are creative. We can come up with all kinds of new ideas, giving yourself permission to explore those ideas. Right? Okay. Now, that was the great pause. That's the time for self-reflection, the time for audits. We know we don't want our after to look like our before, because there's some really nice things that happened during this time. There are some really nice connections. There are people that I talk to maybe once a year that now I get to talk to more than once a week. Um, I host a Tuesday night happy hour online for all happy hours across the country. Uh, we even had one where somebody said, hey, I need a logo. And somebody said, hey, I need a website design. And people got work out of it. Um, I'll put this in the chat too. There's, I'm not selling anything. We're not, I'm not sticking you on a mailing list. It's, hey, let's hang out. Let's have a beverage of choice. Um, let's share war stories. Let's make sure that we all know that we are connected that we're all in this together. There's not, like I said, there's not a person on the planet who is not affected somehow in some way. I have a friend of mine in the design industry who's lost 10 people in her family. So 
it may not affect you. Like my day-to-day -day life is not a whole lot different. I don't do any outside networking, but I'm used to being at home all the time. I know there's people, this is, they're driving them crazy. And there's everything in between. So what, what are some good things? And this is your opportunity to type in the chat. What are some things that you, you've noticed that are awesome in this? Um, Elizabeth says, I'm grateful for the reset inside during this time. What else? What else, what else is good? Connecting with your friends. Yep, Zoom, thank goodness for Zoom, and FaceTime and Messenger and all of that. What else? What else has been good? More time with my spouse. People are outside more, yeah. What else? Seeing neighbors go by. There was a birthday party down the street in my neighborhood, I live in a cul-de-sac, and there must have been 30 cars going by honking and waving and screaming and hooting and, oh, it was so sweet. Somebody's 10th birthday at the end of my block. <laughs> Homeschooling is hard. It's an incredible amount of time with my young kids. Otherwise, would not have had. Appreciating my spouse and friends more. Yep. How many of you appreciate teachers more? <laughs> more walks outside, more introspection. Right. So what I have just done is I have activated the part of your brain that uh, is gratitude. And there's a great book by Sean Acor called The Happiness Advantage. And he's done 250, 200 or 250 studies, over 200,000 people showing that happy people are more financially successful. They live longer, they have better health, they're more connected, they have more opportunities, and on and on and on. And one of the seven things that Sean outlines in his books is gratitude. So all these things that you just listed, add to your gratitude list for today. Like, yeah, I'm really grateful for that. I walked outside earlier, mind you, it was a little cold, but this, the color of blue in the sky, I just like, wow, I'm so grateful that my eyes still work and I can still see that color. I'm grateful to the freelance exchange and the opportunities it has granted me and the connections that it has granted me and the opportunities to speak to people and maybe have my good juju go a little bit further. Those are on my list today. So there's a, um, there's a nice thing called post-traumatic growth and the government is now encouraging um, soldiers who go off and see um, frontline action that they don't have to only be concerned with you come back as you were you come back with post-traumatic stress disorder or you come back um, in a body bag they're like no 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 there's another option and it's post-traumatic growth and it's what happens when you prime your brain to start looking in the moment, start looking for the positives, looking for the silver lining, looking for what everyone else is missing because they're, you know, so absorbed in the uh, And it's post-traumatic growth. Um, Malala is a great example, post-traumatic growth. Um, I'm going to ask you guys, what's another example of who you know who has gone through a trauma of some kind and come out the other side a better, more whole person? Oh, friend of mine, um, his baby died at three months, two months. And uh, he's, a, he's a more kind person. If it was even possible, he wasn't unkind before, but now he, he runs a yearly charity gives to people, um, embraces that day as the time to um, be grateful for his two kids who didn't die. Who else? Who else can you think of who's gone through something just super traumatic and 
has come out of it a better person. Nothing, oh, major accidents, yeah. How about our first responders? How about our nurses and doctors? Yeah. Recently lost parents really has changed their perspective on life and being present with family and friends, yeah. It has the potential to do good, is what I'm trying to get at. The Great Pause has potential to do a whole lot of good. And I invite you to prime yourself to start looking for those things. And there's three ways, in my, in my experience, there are three ways that you can do this every day. Gratitude, and we've already talked about that. Self-love, self-care is another. And the third one is creativity. And self-care, I'm talking about, you know, doing that physical audit, doing the, the sleep audit, the time audit, being, being co really conscious and aware of what social media you're consuming and, and really limiting the negative input. Because your brain can't tell the difference between you watching something traumatic and it happening to you. That's what makes movies so fun. It's because our brains go, oh, those are the chemicals you need? Here you go. You go on a little ride along with the movie or along with the news. So limit, limit your negative input and increase your positive input. And part of that is gratitude. Part of that is self-care, uh, including self-talk. What are some nice things that you could tell yourself during this time? in your self-talk where you're feeling like, oh God, this is never gonna end. I can't go outside, this is awful, I'm so stressed. What are some better things that you can tell yourself, a better story that you could tell yourself? Go ahead and put that in the chat. Elizabeth, nice, this has forced us to learn how to be still and get to know ourselves. Yeah, there's no one better to be stuck with than yourself and no one worse to be stuck with than yourself. What are some good things, positive self-talk that you can tell yourself? The pause has not deterred any of our skills and has likely enhanced them. There you go, I am healthy, I can face tomorrow. Promise that is beautiful, that is beautiful. It's exactly what I'm looking for, I am healthy. I can face tomorrow. At least I didn't kill them. Thank you, Patty. How about, um, I can get through this. This is temporary. I'm strong enough. If you really, really want a powerful tool, say these things to yourself in the mirror. You talk about a moving experience. Hold up a mirror or stand in front of the mirror and say, you got this, honey. I believe in you. You are strong and you are capable and this is temporary. Try it, I dare you. It's pretty powerful. All right, and the last one is creativity. And creativity, before, before I went through my training, I thought, I'm creative for my job every day. Ugh, I just wanna unplug, just sit me in front of Netflix with a glass of wine and I'm fine. But creativity is is an invitation to whatever it is you're feeling on the inside to come out and play without any judgment, without any labeling. You don't have to inspect it. You can just feel it. Those of you who follow my Instagram know that every now and then I post whatever my, my doodle is for the day. I don't give myself more than 21 minutes per day, but it lets what's on the inside come out and play. That also helps with overwhelm and anxiety. Invite your creative high spirit, your creative free spirit, your creative little kid who still lives inside of you to come out and play. I personally love to, to doodle with crayons because I love the way they smell and they remind me of being a kid. 
grab some paper, don't have any, any inkling of what it's supposed to look like. And if that voice chimes in, slap that guy on the face because that's your inner critic and that's not the time for him to come in and play. I feel like you have your, your creative free spirit on one shoulder and your inner critic on the other side. And your inner critic is like, don't post that. That looks dumb. What are people going to think? Don't, don't put the blue there. The blue looks bad there. Right? Your creative free spirit says, oh, this is fun. This is cool. Crayons smell good. Or I wonder. I'm curious. And really let that part of you come out and play. And you will feel so much better every day afterwards. Yeah, you don't have to chase everything, right? Yeah. So those are my three things. Self-care, self-love, having a conversation with yourself in the mirror. Gratitude, having a gratitude journal that you write in every day. It sounds, uh, all of this sounds kind of woo-woo, but there is a whole lot of science to back it up. And anybody who knows me knows I'm a big science nerd. Um, and then the third one is creativity. Let, let what's on the inside come out and play without dissecting it. And oftentimes you'll find when you're creating something, when you're doodling, that you'll get solutions to some things you weren't even thinking about. That happens to me all the time. Like, okay, I only have potatoes left, but I do have butter. Um, what am I going to make for dinner? And then I'm doodling, oh, I know what I'm going to make, of course. Um, or, you know, how am I going to, how am I going to make rent this month? Or how am I going to pay my car payment or whatever it is that's making you anxious? All right, time to draw. Time to sit down, whether it's painting or coloring or chalk or crayons or clay or sidewalk chalk or whatever. Set your timer for 21 minutes, half an hour, 10 minutes, whatever, every single day, and you will heal. Creativity's job is to heal you so that you're healed and whole. And in doing so, you become an agent of change for all of your freelance clients, for your family, you become a better support network for them. Everything in your life will be affected if you are whole and healed. Trust me, I know. <laughs> I used to, be, before the um, 100 days um, coaching that I went through, I put all of my negative emotions into a bottle and I shoved the tight cork down and I, this is how I felt all the time. There's the cork and I have it down. And I didn't allow myself to feel anything negative. Oh, it's negative. Got to put it in the bottle. Can't deal with it. Mm -mm. Until I realized there's no negative emotions and I let all the emotions out. And then my bottle disappeared. I don't need a bottle anymore because I'm allowing myself to feel everything I'm feeling. And I encourage all of you to be able to give yourself permission to do the same. Yeah, Cordelia writes, as an illustrator, we feel the pressure to make something beautiful. Yeah, that's your inner critic talking. Chances are if you're an illustrator or a designer or you're doing something for a client, there's a purpose. It needs to look a certain way and that's an appropriate time for your inner critic to come in. If you're doodling for yourself, you tell that guy to shush. Stick him in the trunk if you need to, right? So gratitude, self-love, creativity. Set tiny goals for yourself like today, I'm going to put shoes on. Today, I'm going to brush my teeth. Today, I'm going to go outside and look at the sky for 10 minutes. Small goals. Um, and then... If you're, if you're stressing out about, oh my God, I still, I got to make rent, I got to do things. And you're, what you, what's happening is you're looking at the entire mountain range and take the great pause, internalize it, stand where you are and think, okay, and then turn around and look at where you've been and how far you've come and everything you've overcome and give yourself permission to be still and be present for just a little while. It affects everything. Be aware of your mindset, right? Your self-talk. I can do this. This is temporary. If you find yourself going, oh, I suck at this. I'm new at this and I will get better. Sounds better than, oh, I suck at this. Like me and technology and these three microphones and the ring light and the 
mixer board and all the everything. It's definitely uncomfortable, but I got this. I'm giving myself permission to screw up if I need to, because you all are nice and forgiving. So grant yourself some grace, all right? Um, if you don't already have a source of positive input, um, I can strongly recommend anything by Brene Brown, either written or her new podcast called Unlocking Us. There's a great podcast by Stephen Gates. Actually, I'm going to put Brene's name in here just in case. Oops. Brene, Brene Brown. Um, and then the other one is Stephen Gates, and he's got a podcast called The Crazy One, and it's specifically for creatives, and it's everything from how is the best way to use Keynote, to how do I deal with imposter syndrome, to, you know, how am I going to how am I going to make this proposal? I mean, it covers all aspects of creativity and he's got a really nice speaking voice. It's awesome. And he's a super nice guy. Um, anybody else have any other sources of positive um, information? Uh, another one I have is um, One Bike, One World on Instagram. It's a story of Dean and his cat Nala, who he picked up as a kitten while riding his bike from Scotland to Greece. And now he's in, oh, Romania, Bulgaria, I don't know, one of the Slavic countries and um, Hungary. Thank you, Julie. Uh, it, it's a source of joy. You get to see somebody's cat running around. It's so cute. Um, anybody else want to put in, put in the chat anything that you go to on a regular basis for positive input? I mean, whether it's, and, and don't put the filter on now. If it's cat videos, share it. If it's cooking shows, share it. Um, Believe Nation, Evan Carmichael, YouTube, awesome. Um, right before this is over, I encourage you to, those three little dots right next to the word everyone in the chat window down at the bottom, that you can copy the entire chat and you can take everything out of here all at once. The Honest, Honest Designer podcast, thank you. Late night shows, yes. Things that bring you joy and what you're doing is you're telling your brain it's okay it's all right anything else the Leslie Jordan on Instagram thank you nice all right um, I want you to encourage you to have an abundant mindset and that abundance is created through self-love creativity and gratitude um, I'm available for coaching. This is the basis of my um, coaching uh, practice. I'm going to share one more image with you. That uh, left-hand corner is the fear corner. If you look at your life through a lens of fear, you're looking at the past with shame and resentment. You look at the present with self-doubt and a lack of confidence, and you look at the future with worry and anxiety, I don't want you to have to live that way. So I move all my coaching clients over into that sunny love corner where you look at the past with gratitude, and you, th and you think everything that's happened to me has gotten me to this point in my life, and I'm so proud of everything that I've overcome. You look at the present with confidence, and um, look at the future with patience and, and curiosity. You can't wait to see what's next. At any given moment, you're only in one place along that fear, love gradient. You can't be in both places at once. Feel free to take a screenshot of this if you're interested. Even I've had people saying even just seeing this every day reminds them that they're in control and they get to choose love. Love is the most powerful non-physical force in the universe, and I totally recommend you embrace it whenever possible. When you're faced with a decision, say, okay, what would love do? Or is this decision I'm making, am I making it out of fear? Or am I deciding from a base of love? So I encourage you every day, all the time, choose love. It will always serve you well. Thanks. That's all I got today. What a wonderful way to end this two-day event. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Shelly. And thank you, Shelly, for moderating all these and for helping organize this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to everybody who participated and who came on every session and was here and, and um, interacted and was engaged and everybody's, it's been really fun. It's been a wonderful, wonderful couple of days. So I love those heart hands. Yes. <laughs> If anybody has any questions, um, I, I'm releasing you unless you have any questions. I will be here until the last one leaves. So feel free to um, jump in and uh, ask me any questions. Thank you, Julie. Mini How Conference, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, like it really has been. It's been like a, a mini uh, creative freelance or, you know, creative independence track. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, uh, I personally, and I know that this has been really hard on a number of people, and I know that the economic pain that is inflicted, and so I'm very aware of, the pro of all the problems. It's personally been helpful for me. I mean, just this pause has been, you know, uh, actually really taken a lot of stress off of me. But I'm just thinking, well, you know, what? in terms of like building our businesses going forward, what networking is going to look like. And it's going to so, look a lot like this <laughs> I know <laughs> for a while. I know. And just getting in, you know, like all the potential, you know, uh, what in person might look like, or if we're going to be doing in person. So I just, just from a very practical standpoint, I was just curious about your thoughts on that. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's important to stay yep. curious, number one. And, and I think yeah. curiosity serves you well it makes you not miss opportunities that may otherwise slip by. Um, yeah. We have an opportunity to lead and describe and shape what that future is going to look like. Um, that's part of the reason that's why true. I started the Tuesday night happy hours is because I, I wanted to make sure freelancers know I'm here for you. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm here for you. I want to support you. I want to um, help you in your business. Ask me, you know, anything during the freelancer happy hour, like, you know, billing or client management or whatever. I'm answering it. I'm not charging anybody for anything. I'm not even collecting email addresses. Nobody's being added to a list or anything. It's just Eventbrite to send you the reminder so I don't have to. Um, but as far as shaping the future, we get to decide, all right? Mm -hmm. is, is this working for us? Do you want to continue this? There's no reason why you can't get a Zoom account or whatever Google's new um, software is and start doing these yourself. You know, if, if, you are, if you have strong feelings about connecting people, jump in, start something. Throw in oh, a topic. absolutely. Yeah, no, and I, I, have, uh, I have several collaborative projects I've started. I was organizing it through Facebook group and email. I'm not surprised, Cordelia. You strike me as the kind of person to get shit done. Well, thank you. So, no, and I'm going to continue with it. I get, but I do appreciate what you're saying. And it's, um, yeah, I was just thinking about building out, like continuing to build on network or continuing to, because there are fields I kind of, kind of wanted to break into and trying to do that under these conditions when everyone's yeah. working from home and a lot of people feel totally overwhelmed and a lot of stuff got put on yeah. hold. And, yeah, you know. I would encourage you to share your story of feeling overwhelmed. Like, oh my God, I am completely overwhelmed, but I still want to connect with you. How can I support you? Yeah. Leaders are are taking a little bit more flack now. It's it's um. There there there's a big differentiator between a manager and a leader, and a leader is someone who says, um, "I have this idea, and I'm going to help," and a manager says, "Do this." And right, a delegator, yeah. Right, and a leader can say, I would love to see this happening. I'm going to start. Anybody else want to join? Because this looks like fun. You know, to, to, to try stuff. And now is the time to try new stuff. Now is the time to um, be willing to fail or to pivot or, or any of that. Stephen Gates said in his podcast yesterday that, um, or no, it's uh, Greg Larkin, another brilliant mind. Uh, he's got a book called This Could Get Me Fired about working in-house. And it's, and it's great advice for, um, we're going to try this because now is the time to try this. Now is the time to make the mistakes and to, because um, everything is up in the air. N nothing is right. solid and nothing is for sure. So try everything. Try it twice if it doesn't hurt. I mean... <laughs> 
yeah, no, it's a great time to be able to be more vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, promise, the next meeting, oh, the Tuesday night happy hours? Is that what you meant? Tuesday night at 6.30. And I put the link in there. It's bit.ly slash freelance happy hour, but mind the capitals. Anybody else have questions? Comments? Anybody want to share a recent belly flop? Like th something that you tried, like yesterday, me hitting my glasses on this thing. <laughs> I can cheer. Sitting on this hard chair the whole day made my ping. ping. <laughs> so I bet you're ready to, to sit on the couch for a little while. Yeah, stand. Or to go for a walk. <laughs> walk. <laughs> right? All right. Well, thank you, everybody who contributed to this, especially those who are um, willing to be vulnerable with the group. Thank you. Thank you so much. Give yourself a pat on the back. Give yourself it a hug from me. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, here's some good juju to all of you. Yeah, thank you so much. It was wonderful, Shelly. It was great, greatly organized. Thank I you. Thank you, thank you, everybody, for, for participating and being so, like I said, so engaged. It's just been great. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Enjoy thank the rest you. of your week. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks, Byron. Thanks, Byron. Bye. See you soon. See you.